On today's episode, we're sitting down with worshipful brother Jeff Boyle from Barton Lodge Number no. 6. You're listening to The First Three Knocks, a Masonic podcast in the District of York, where we discuss topics for the betterment of masonry. The opinions discussed in this podcast are those of the individual and do not represent the views of Grand Lodge or any other Masonic body. Now, here are your hosts. Good afternoon, brethren. Good afternoon. I am Worshipful Brother Bert Tellier, the past master of the Rising Sun Lodge in Aurora, Ontario. And I am Brother uh, Gino Scovio, uh, currently sitting as Junior Warden, also of the Rising Sun uh, Lodge 129 in Aurora. And Brother Sprott here, producer of the first three knocks, Lodge Zeradatha in Uxbridge, mm. Ontario. I didn't hear beautiful and historic yeah, not this time. Well, uh, introduction. I didn't I want to take it, we're take it away from Hamilton today. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> see? We, uh, we're very excited today. We are sitting down with a worshipful brother, Jeff Boyle, who is the media past master of Barton Lodge Number no. 6. And we're coming to you from the actually beautiful and historic building in Hamil- Hamilton, Ontario, the uh, Scottish Rite Club of Hamilton. Um, Jeff is a member of the Valley of Hamilton Scottish Rite. He's the past uh, GM of the Scottish Rite Club here in Hamilton, also a member of York Rite and a 32nd degree Scottish Rite member. So, Jeff, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome home, I guess, is how, how we would describe <laughs> that, huh? Well, thanks for coming by. Yeah, we're, we're pretty excited to come out here. It's our first time at the first three knocks coming to Hamilton, and uh, we were very blessed to have the opportunity to sit down with you. Uh, being the past master of the Barton Lodge and your involvement with Scottish uh, Rite, really great opportunity for us to connect and learn a little more, share with our listeners all about the Scottish Rite and uh, specifically your lodge here in Hamilton. So that's great. Thank you for having me. So what we we typically do with our uh, guests and and interviewees is we'd like to learn a little bit about you. So maybe you could tell us how you got involved with uh, Freemasonry and the Scottish Rite. Well, um, for me, um, very much a a family tradition. Um, My father's a member of the Barton as well and uh, has been for about 30 years. Yeah, um, my grandfather, great grandfather, etc. So it's uh, it's very deep rooted uh-huh. uh, in in our family. So it was one of those things that uh, was always on the surface growing up. So yeah. it was, when it, when am I old enough to join? I guess was, <laughs> oh, was yeah. pretty had, much how that, it came uh, along. You yeah, had that itch. Bite I did. At the bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty interesting though. Um, I remember just after I think I was twenty two years old. I went to my dad and I said, uh, I think I'm ready to join the lodge. He said. Uh, I'll let you know when you're ready. <laughs> so I had to wait a couple more years, but uh, <laughs> it was well worth the wait. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. So you, you've been around uh, Masons quite a bit in, in your past then. My you, whole life, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's incredible. Did they share anything with you? Um, not really. No. <laughs> I was going to ask that same question. So did you know dad was, I mean, obviously you did. Very much so, yeah. But he was very quiet about it, right? Very quiet about it, yeah. Yeah. Um, Said so, uh, my my grandparents, my my grandfather and my grandmother, who was very very involved uh, in the um, independent bodies, uh, Eastern Star, Lord mm. of the Amaranth, uh, etc. So um, again, grew up around it my whole life. Uh, you know, always saw them getting dressed up and going out, and always wondered what they were up to. So. Yeah. <laughs> now you know. Now I do. Yeah. <laughs> Now you know. We had the opportunity before you arrived to sort of tour the building. Uh, it's incredible. I mean, it is absolutely stunning. There's some incredible history here. Uh, I think we got into some of the rooms we could get into. Some of them were <laughs> locked. We couldn't figure out the lights we even. We snuck I think in and was, broke into a few of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as, as past uh, GM of this building, maybe tell us a little bit about the uh, this historic building. Yeah, so this uh, the house part that we're in right now, which uh, houses the club, uh, was owned by uh, the Tuckett family, um, George Tuckett. Uh, uh, the Tuckett family was a, a huge uh, tobacco company. Uh, okay. They were actually based right here in Hamilton. Uh, eventually, in the 1950s or 60s, I'm not too sure exactly when, but they, they sold to Imperial Tobacco, which is um, based out of Guelph now, I believe. Um, De Maurier would be right. probably the brand that people would, would, would know. Uh, but Tuckett was in business for almost a hundred years. Wow. And, um, this was, um, uh, George Jr., the son of the, uh, the founder of the company. This was his home. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, Built in 1892. 1892. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you can feel it. 
walking through. Yeah. Was was he a Mason as well? He was actually. Actually, um, George Jr., I'm not 100% sure, but his father is actually a past master of the Barton Lodge. So, wow. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, another really interesting thing in here, and I noticed, uh, Gina, when you were playing with the doors, trying to figure them out, all the woodworking in this building is all hand carved. Um, and Correct. it was done by a firm called uh, John Hoodless and Sons. And uh, just for the record, John Hoodless is a past master of the Barton as well, <laughs> uh, former DDGM. So, uh, yeah, a lot of ties uh, to this building and, and to, this, to the lodge that I belong to, for sure. We certainly recognize walking around, again, all the hand carvings and the very yeah. ordained uh, mm-hmm. pieces that are, are collected here and are on display. So Very much so. Uh, again, very powerful energy, uh, if you will kicking around these uh, these doors. Yeah, it, it's it's a real big secret here in the city um, from my time working here. You know, you, you you hear a lot that people, oh, I've been by there, you know, but I've never Drove really been there. inside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't really know what goes on in there, but, you know, it, it's quite the place. Uh, like I said, this was a, a family home for four people. Wow. So you can imagine it's, it's space rather they had. large. Yeah. yeah. And people walking by, are, do you guys have like open house tours and stuff like that? Um, there have been at times, yeah. yeah. Yep, but it's it's primarily the house or the club itself right. uh, is is a private members club. Uh, you have to be a uh, actually I believe you can be a, a master mason now and join the club. Uh, it used to be for Scottish Rite members oh, only. Yeah. However, uh, they've they've relaxed that a little bit, and as long as you're a master mason in good standing, you uh, are eligible to join the club. So there's um, yeah, um, so we, we do get a lot of traffic in here. Um, we sold the Central Masonic Temple. Uh, in Hamilton in 2002, um, and all the lodges moved here. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so the this place was pretty much dark really? quite a bit. Okay. Um, so it was a win-win um, uh-huh. for for the Masons in the districts, and uh, as well as the Scottish Rite. You know, there's 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 life in the building now. Yeah. Um, pretty much every night of the week, um, there's there's a lodge. I mean, I believe there's 14 or 15 bodies that meet here. Incredible. So yeah, well, we saw the twelve lockers upstairs. I guess guessing for the twelve lodges that meet, and then yep. we were told a few chapters and so a couple of chapters. Bodies and whatnot. Yep, that's right. Yeah, some of the um, uh, York Rite appendant bodies as well, like the York Rite College mm-hmm. and the Conclave and the Templars all meet here as well. So yeah, it's it's used mm-hmm. quite a bit, which is great. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's an incredible building. I mean, we probably could have spent a few more hours walking around, oh, no just doubt. enjoying everything <laughs> here and self guided on top of that. So we were, I think we were lost. Another excuse to come back. That's all. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're we're very excited because we're here to visit, have a fraternal visit with Barton Lodge this evening as well, and maybe tell us a little bit about Barton Lodge Number Six. I mean, you just came out of the chair recently, so. Yep. Um, a very, very vibrant lodge. Uh, we're very busy right now, which is great. Um, as far as lodges go, we're, we're very active. Uh, a lot of candidates. Um, our, our Masonic year runs uh, December to December. Mm. And um, I sat in the chair last year for the second time. And uh, we had, um, every month we had two meetings. Uh, wow. So we had an emergent meeting. Um, and we did on three occasions double degrees so oh, you're busy we're yeah. really busy yeah no summer breaks at all like no, we took month? it no we took a summer break okay. uh we, we take three months off in the summer however right. we uh we were that busy with with degrees and uh new members and quite a few affiliates as well so hmm. um as far as lodges go in this city i think we're very fortunate um we, we've we're very busy um and we've, we've got a good uh core group of guys that that come on a regular basis which is important so yeah you know you, you see a lot of other lodges that that you know tend to struggle a bit and uh, happy to report and lucky that we're not one of them so which is great yeah that's great to hear there are so many that are going through difficulty so what do you think are some of the the reasons for that success and what is what is bringing the members in um we have a pretty decent philosophy um for us it's about um you know we we talk amongst ourselves the officers the past masters it's you know, identifying what each person, when they come to the lodge and they petition the lodge, is what is their Freemasonry really is what we're we're asking them. And not everybody has the same idea. Some people are in it for the social aspect. Uh, some are in it for the esoterics. Um, you know, the, the, so there's many different avenues. So we try to accommodate, and that seems to be working really well. We have uh, a bunch of younger guys that are really enthusiastic, which helps. 
Um, we get a great uh, turnout from our past masters on a regular basis oh, as well. So, yeah, there just seems to be a lot. And we're, we're very social. Mm. Um, we do a lot uh, on the social front. Um, we have a very successful Robbie Burns uh, dinner every year, um, which is just outstanding um, golf tournaments and, 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 and the like. So um, we're very active. We do a lot uh, with our spouses and whatnot as well. Um, you know, we'll go night at the races or river cruises and dinners and things like that. So there's, there's lots of things that we like to do. A lot of the, the lads are members of the club here, uh, the Scottish Rite Club. So um, take advantage of the social opportunity to get together at club events as well. So, right. yeah, so I think we're in a good situation by geography as well as mm-hmm. with what we have uh, for membership. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a, an attraction to the building itself, sure. uh, I would imagine, for some of your members, the, the historical implications. Yeah, I mean, you, I think you said two, two relatives were past masters of Barton Lodge as well. That's correct. So um, I have uh, both of my fifth great-grandfathers, uh, Charles Depew and William Lottridge, are both past masters of the Barton. Wow. Uh, 1801 and 1803. How did that feel for you the first time you went into the chair of King Solomon? with that history. Outstanding. Actually, the first time I, uh, I went in the chair, I wasn't aware. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was just going to ask, did you know that? I didn't. Uh, so uh, the first time I was the master was 2010 uh, and I wasn't aware, um, but I was very aware the last time. And I think it made it extra special. Yeah. Uh, last year, going into that chair, knowing that uh, there's definitely family ties there. And, uh, yeah, and, and as you lot. said, it was, <clears throat> it was dad, <clears throat> excuse me, who uh, kind of like his work brought you guys back to Hamilton and that's how you both discovered Barton Lodge. Yep. Um, I always think uh, when you say stuff like that, it was actually your great grandpa's calling you. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, that it was, energy, that power, it's there, right? Absolutely. So my grandfather and my great grandfather uh, both were life members of uh, Great Western Lodge in Windsor. Mm. And uh, as I'd mentioned to you before, my great grandfather was born and raised here in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And um, after the First World War, um, in in the early 1920s, he worked for Imperial Oil and uh, there was an opportunity for him to move to Windsor. So he did. Um, So he didn't join the craft until he had moved to Windsor. And uh, so there was really no knowledge of the Barton Lodge from from his perspective. And uh, when... Uh, my family moved here in 1979 when my dad was deciding to join the craft. He talked to his grandfather and he said, well, which lodge should I join? And my great grandfather said, well, join the oldest lodge. <laughs> <laughs> and that was really the only advice that he took. And, and, you know, funny enough, here we are, you know, 40 years later and we find out that we have some pretty deep ties. Yeah. 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 How did you come across that knowledge? How did you learn about that? So, um, Again, my father and I were uh, very involved in um, researching our, our family history. Um, uh, we did know that we were from United Empire Loyalist uh, lineage. So in order, I'm not too sure if you're familiar with the process, but in order to actually receive a United Empire Loyalist designation, you have to prove your your lineage uh, by official documentation. Oh, so, no, I didn't know uh, Birth records, marriage mm-hmm. records, uh, census records, etc. So we were able to do that, and we were able to actually, on my grandfather's side, we were able to, to actually prove our uh, United Empire Loyalist uh, status. And it was just by fluke we were kind of looking at my grandmother's side and uh, knowing that there was a tie here to Hamilton. And uh, lo and behold... Uh, it was that was the easiest track back uh, uh, th- on her side. My grandfather's side was rather tough, actually. Yeah. And, uh, we had to do a lot of digging and research to find some of those proving documents. But my grandmother's side, we were able to prove it right back into the you know the mid seventeen hundreds in in Pennsylvania. So it was yeah, outstanding, and awesome. uh, it it came right through Niagara, right up into Hamilton, and yeah, pretty interesting. Oh, that's that's great history. For sure. Now, as past master, again, having your grandfathers have been part of this history, did you ever pull the books, the old past books, and kind of see their notes and handwritings and whatnot? Um, no. Um, interesting enough, actually, I, I, I was fortunate enough to know my great-grandfather. Um, I think it was 18 when he passed away, and my, my grandfather... He just passed two years ago at the age of 99. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah, so, I, wow. you know, I definitely had a lot of 
personal contact. Uh, really cool. Uh, the first time I was installed as master, three generations standing in the east, uh, which was great. Um, I have a nice gavel bones. that was my <laughs> grandfather had uh, made for me, and wow. so a lot there. And um, you know, he followed my um, my Masonic journey. I'm the first in the last four generations actually to to go into the east. Uh, oh, okay. My father, my grandfather, or my great grandfather never uh, sat in the chair, so huh. it was kind of neat to uh, kind of traverse that on my own without any. Uh, it was your input. own journey. Yeah, yeah. that was is neat. very cool. How much advice did you get from them sitting in the east? How much? How much correction did you get from them? <laughs> yeah, because we all know, you know, past masters like to make sure we're doing things right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. The, the old school well, yeah. in my day, or you know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But that was great. Awesome. In, uh, in your previous role here as, as GM and your involvement with uh, the Scottish Rite, maybe tell us a little bit about that organization and what goes on here. Sure, yeah. So uh, the Hamilton Valley, um, which pretty much spreads uh, into the, um, down towards Lake Erie from Hamilton. So you've got um, like Norfolk County and down to Brantford, Simcoe, that, that type of area, all the way out to Niagara. Mm-hmm. Um the, it pretty much takes up uh, what we call the Hamilton Valley. So there are quite a few uh, members here. There are three bodies that meet here. Uh, there is a Lodge of Perfection, a chapter of Rosecraw, and the Consistory, um, which all meet here. Um, so th- this place is very busy uh, twice a year with the um, the Spring Assembly and the Fall Reunion. Um, you know, we do see a significant number of, of, of applicants every year, which is good. Um it's um but like all other masonic bodies you know it's uh numbers are starting to dwindle um it wasn't that long ago when it was uncommon to see 100 you know members in a class Mm -hmm. wow for scottish right now you're probably in the 30s 40s depending on different variables but uh sometimes it's a bit of a challenge Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very similar to the masonic um membership challenge as well yeah. for sure so what are some of the things that the scottish right is doing to um, to address that well that's a great question um you know they've looked at different things so first of all i know that the uh scottish right here in this valley um membership is a life membership so it's a one-time fee so to speak um so you're not really dealing with the challenges of members you know uh demitting or yeah. being suspended for non-payment of dues etc so you know once you make that initial um application and uh pay your initiation fee you know you're you're a life member so that helps um but they've done a few different things to try to entice um membership um making it a little easier because a life membership is not necessarily cheap um you know it's not like you're paying 100 bucks mm. um so what they've done is they've you know uh, pre-authorized payment plans um oh, interesting. you know so you, you you pretty much can make installments up to and including the day of uh, right so yeah so they've, they've tried to make things a little easier for for guys to to get involved um from that from that standpoint um and trying to keep things a little um more modern i'm not really involved in the um the day-to-day stuff around here anymore but i know they're looking at doing a lot of things like um filming um degrees um so there's some of the valleys that are far reaching like thunder bay and north bay and whatnot they they don't necessarily get a lot of candidates um and sometimes it's hard to get 40 guys together to put on a degree let alone you know um a class so what they've 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 started to do is is film some of the um degrees at some of the bigger uh, valleys like Toronto and Hamilton, etc., and offer degrees that way as well. I mean, oh, it's not very. it's not ideal, but it's better than not having not having at it at all. Yeah, absolutely makes it accessible. And I mean, we talked about that on one of our last shows. How we see masonry kind of growing in the new age, if you will, without changing the traditions and really being innovated with it. You know, maybe one day we'll have virtual lodges, and it certainly sounds like by putting videos together again where you might have light membership or not enough fellas to put on the, the, the show, if you will. Right. Um, now you have that. So that's, that's a great, I think, step going in the future. And that's one of the things that we, we really find at the Scottish Rite is, is the, the degrees are so elaborate. 
you know, some of the casts are, are, are rather large. Mm-hmm. Um, I direct um, three degrees right now, and they're um, the 27th degree in the consistory is, um, you know, there's a cast. There's two completely separate casts for the two um, scenes in the degree. And I think we're upwards of around 40 to 50 cast members, you know. So that's that's sometimes like herding cats, getting all these guys together. But, um, you know, it's a it's a rather large undertaking. And I can really see where some of the smaller valleys would struggle with that. You know, Um, Scottish Rite is is a lot different than 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 craft craft masonry or, or Royal Arch. You know, they they're putting on these elaborate degrees and that becomes a challenge as well as getting guys to commit and uh you know being a director um is definitely a gray hair uh, affair <laughs> uh, you, you get guys not showing up on the day sounds like a master's yeah, challenge sounds eh? like the worst for master's master challenge. Challenge. very well, much so you're well experienced so. in that i'm sure so that that works out well yeah it's really interesting in your building here uh we noticed in the sort of the auditorium there's there's i mean it's an amazing theater yeah for exactly that purpose so you you must have an advantage to be able to put those together in terms of it would be something to see absolutely um you know it's unique in the in the sense anywhere here in canada we're the only um we call it the cathedral it's not really a cathedral but uh, that's kind of the name that it's it, it's um carried since it opened and um but it's really like a theater in the round if uh, that's kind of how it's set up. So, you know, there's seating on three sides. It's it's uh, tiered seating like in a stadium or mm-hmm. uh, whatnot. So um, the idea is that everyone can see what's going on on the floor. So a lot of the the degrees take place on the floor, elaborate costumes, great sets, um, you know, lot, lots of moving parts, sound, light. Um, there are so many people involved. When I say there's casts of, of up to 40 in some of these degrees, that doesn't even include... You know the guys in wardrobe, uh, the guys that do makeup, yeah, doing and the guy behind the scenes, yeah. the lighting guys, the stage crew, the sound. I mean, there's so many people involved. It's 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 quite the undertaking for sure. And I think the one thing I will say is we take it for granted being here because that's all we know. Yeah. And it's not until you go somewhere else and you see it and you go, oh wow, wow it's a little different. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, so you know, I think we're spoiled a bit here. Um, you know, we we've definitely have the Cadillac when it comes to you know, cars here. And uh, sometimes we take that for granted. Yeah, I could imagine. One of the things we'd like to do with uh, your, your permission and support is maybe take some pictures of, of some of the areas of the, the historic building here and put it on our, probably put it on our website, I would uh, assume, and on Instagram. Yeah, I'll throw that up so people can take a look at the building. Yep. Yeah, because it really, us talking about it is is one thing, but mm-hmm. to see it, and you got to see it. It's really special. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll. Uh, I know where all the light switches are. So. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Sprotty doesn't know where they are. <laughs> He's not him. that tech savvy. He wasn't that tech savvy. To- well, it's 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 old tech. <laughs> <laughs> so the the other side of the building, uh, and we started talking about the house part, but the so the what we call the new side of the building, um, the darker uh, brick on the outside where the cathedral is. Uh, that was built in, uh, and opened in 1923. So that's the new side. That's the new side. So <laughs> Only all, 100 years old. <laughs> so all the technology in there be- backstage is, is new, 1923 new. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still <Wow>. candles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We saw, we saw a lot of the different rooms. I mean, I'm just blown away by the space mm-hmm. in, in the building. It's a very old building, but it was built with enormous room right. to, to move around and live, I, I guess. Well, so outside of the house, so the the new part of the building was was purpose built mm. for the Scottish Rite. Mm. Um, we used to have a, a Masonic temple on James Street North, um, which burnt down in I want to say nineteen sixty eight. I'm not one hundred percent sure. Um, sixty eight, sixty nine, um, and the Scottish Rite used to meet there, and it was just way too big. Yeah. Um, or the, the Scottish Rite was too big for, uh, that, for building. that building. Oh, okay. Um, so they decided uh, they had some um, very influential masons, so to speak, at the time that um, some deep pockets and and knew how to invest money. And they built this place. They broke ground in uh, April 1922, and the first meeting was May 1923. So wow. within a year, they they, they built were, they were everything. Quick. And incredible. Uh, yeah. That's 
quite amazing. That is incredible. So you have the cathedral. You have one lodge room that houses many different lodges or one temple room. Sorry. So, so there are two rooms. So right across from the cathedral is what we call the red room. Um, and that's primarily we use that for, for York, right? Um, red room because it's yep. red carpeted. And um, prior to uh, the Masons moving here uh, in the early 2000s, that was, we used to call it the table room. It was just a kind of an ante room okay. for the cathedral. On the third floor, so above the red room is what we call the blue room. It's uh, it's a craft lodge room. Um, again, it was built as a lodge room, but was never really used. And uh, when it was decided to sell Central Masonic and move here, mm-hmm. they had to move pretty quick to get it all turn it into a ready. lodge room. Um, the one thing I will say, and it's kind of uh, the other edge of the sword, is you know, f- for such a big place like this. Um, the lodge room is, is, I would say it's not super small, but it's, it's not very big. And I think if you guys are coming to lodge tonight, um, with the grandmaster being here and whatnot, you'll, you'll probably find it's a little tight in there. Right. So, but Hey, a full lodge room is a full lodge room. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Especially for a first degree tonight, right? Yeah. First yeah. degree. Yeah, it's great for a candidate. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's yeah. what it's all about. Sure. And we have some special things tonight as well, because, uh, the lodge actually, turned 225 years old yesterday oh wow, we're here very for cool. an additional yeah so this is well. actually our regular meeting it's kind of our birthday meeting and um on saturday night here in the main banquet room we're having a, a gala uh, to celebrate uh so we're looking forward to that should be a really interesting night lots of things going on so awesome. exciting year yeah. Exciting year. Are you still uh, heavily involved with the lodge? I mean, in your role as a past master? Very much so. Very much so. Um, I'm actually the chairman of the 225th uh, committee. Um, so that, and um, I do a little bit of work in the lodge as well. Um, right now, uh, just whatever the whatever the lodge needs me to do. But yeah, I don't miss very often. Yeah, wonderful. Well, that's a, that's a great overview, Jeff. Maybe uh, maybe we could steal a few minutes from you, and you could take us around. I the was building. just going to say, you got keys to these rooms. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, but I I know how to get. I know the back doors. Uh, so. yeah. <laughs> the trap door is all over the building. We got it. <laughs> Jeff, thank you very much for sitting down with the first three knocks. You gave us a great o- insight on your Masonic career. Uh, this beautiful building that we're in here as well. And and we're very excited to be here at Barton Lodge this evening as well. That's great. Well, thanks very much for having me and uh, continued success with your podcast. It's uh, very well done. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The First Three Knocks. Happy to meet, sorry to part, happy to meet again.